I'm going to show you how I built this maple mantle and hearth for an electric fireplace in a beautiful home on Lake Superior. We're making a fireplace mantle for a customer and what we're going to do is uh, they really like this knot here because it reminds them of Lake Superior and in fact they live on Lake Superior. Their house is you know 50 yards from from the shore. So this will be in the center of the mantle be kind of a focal point. The mantle is 76 inches uh, long roughly and 38 is right in the middle of that knot so that'll work out well. We're going to use the, a miter joint here so we're going to cut the uh, front of the mantle and also the top piece top piece where they join uh, on a miter 45 degree uh, glue it up and the only challenge is this little piece of uh, maple here for the mantle with this nice knot is really warped. This is going to be the hearth or the bottom part of the fireplace it sits on the floor and again um, there'd be another piece of maple mitered to the top and uh, hopefully it all works well. It's just going to have a clear finish on it. Uh, we're going to use a product called Osmo and uh, I think the Osmo should really make a nice finish. Spencer Lewis of Insider Carpentry has a very informative YouTube video on the folding miter technique I'm using on this mantle. He suggests making your miters about a half a degree beyond 45. To avoid confusion I've gone past 45 by half a degree You'll see my digital readout is 44 and a half, but on my saw scale it shows 45.5. I've cut all my pieces at this angle, both on the table saw and the Festool Capex. This technique ensures a tight outside corner on the miter and allows some room for glue. Like any project, the first step was to cut all the materials, including uh, some miter returns that you'll see me install on the hearth portion of the project. Now here I'm cutting that uh, warped uh, piece for the mantle with the Lake Superior knot. And initially I thought I would use a track saw, but I decided just to uh, go with the table saw and it worked out fine. And now what I'm doing is I'm switching over the saw so I can uh, cut the plywood for the for sides of the, uh, of the fireplace. Here I'm putting some pocket holes in the plywood blocks I'll use for the glue up with my Craig Foreman. This machine is a really good investment. I could not find the heavy duty packing tape mentioned in the Insider Carpentry video, so I'm using some clear duct tape here, which had sufficient holding power for this long joint. I'm using inch and a quarter fine thread pocket screws here with a plastic washer under the head. These washers prevent the pocket screw heads from seating too deep when you're going from plywood into hardwood. I've had problems with this in the past. I used Tight Bond 3 for the hearth glue up, but I found it dried a little darker than I wanted. So when I did the mantle glue up, I used Tight Bond Original and it was less noticeable after sanding. My logic was to build the hearth first and iron out any bugs before I tackled the mantle piece, which of course would be the focal point for the entire project. Here I'm running the shank of a screwdriver over the sharp edge of the miter. Unfortunately, the force of the screwdriver caused the tape to split as it ran over the cross-hatching threads on the duct tape. To some extent, this defeated the purpose of the tape, so I had to clamp the joint. Later, when I did the mantle, I skipped this process, and the joint was 100% after sanding, as you'll see. Even so, this hearth turned out really nice. I couldn't wait any longer so I peeled some of the tape back that evening just so I could sand it up and it just looked great so there was nothing really to worry about.
The following morning I took the clamps off, peeled off the tape and sanded up the hearth. I always make sure I clamp my projects onto my bench so there's no chance of it accidentally falling off onto the floor. So I've stripped the tape off and I've hand sanded this uh, hearth here and it looks really good. Uh, and I just wanted to talk to a little bit about the, uh, the sander pads that I use. They're from SIA. They make sponges and also these Velcro pads for sanding uh, various things. They're actually used quite a bit in the automotive industry. One side is fairly stiff and this side here is fairly soft, which is really good for round edges on railings and those kinds of things. But what I like about these hand sanding pads, you always get a better quality job when you uh, do it by hand rather than, uh, especially on a curve like this or a corner, because it's so easy with a uh, rotary machine sander to take off too much. I carry this sandpaper from SIA in a variety of different grits, uh, right from 100 up to 320. I'll use the 120 the bulk of the time for sanding hardwood. Uh, I find that if you sand with a finer grit, you're gonna get uh, polishing, which is a little harder to take stain and so on. Now you'll see here that we have the clear duct tape on this uh, piece. And eventually we just found it, it wasn't worthwhile and it was actually uh, hindering the project. So we took it off and just simply used pin nails to secure the ends in place. On these ends I sanded them right after glue up so I get a nice uh, invisible joint between the pieces with the glue and the, and the uh, sawdust mixing together. Now I'm going to show you how I attach the mitered ends onto the tails of the hearth but actually I did this at the job site but didn't get any footage. Now to tackle the mantle, the first step was a glue up with the Festool Domino machine. This made this project very interesting, all the different steps. Using my brand new Fat Boy pencil, named after me. B, B. One thing I like about this uh, Fat Boy pencil, it makes it real, contrary to how it sounds, it makes a real fine uh, pencil line. Good for doing this kind of work. Now this is something you don't have to do. And by all means, you can just go ahead and not plane this little ridge off. But if I'd want to do a dry fit and then put it, uh, take it apart again, then it's really good to, uh, to take that off.
see daylight poking through underneath that square. Now one of the things you do want to do is you want to make it snug, but if you, especially with this system here, if you crank the heck out of it, eventually physics says that it's got a cup, you know. My Hammer K3 cabinet saw is just an awesome piece of machinery. Here I'm using the outrigger and crosscut fence to trim my mantle pieces. Prior to owning the K3 I would be making these cuts on a miter saw. The hammer is very accurate but occasionally I have to make some minor adjustments on the crosscut fence. And overall it's just a, a great investment. Well, here I'm attaching the bottom lip onto the mantle. You'll see I have some duct tape on the surface of my clamps. This is so the lip won't pull down past the edge of the mantle when I pocket screw the joint, which sometimes happens. This is a tip I learned from Gary Stregler. He is a master carpenter. Several years ago I went through the online training course he did through the Fine Home Building magazine. I learned so many things from Gary, who now has his own YouTube channel. I will leave a link to Gary's channel in the description of this video. Right, so Alden's just rolling over this uh, joint lightly with a screwdriver. We experimented with these uh, plywood, uh, plywood on plywood joints that ordinary packing tape didn't really work as well as this uh, clear, basically what it is, a clear duct tape and uh, it worked really good and it held it together nice and uh, should make a, make a perfect uh, joint. Nice job Alden.
That looks good. That's the Lake Superior shape right there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was an awesome build, really great customers, and I just uh, hope you learned something from the techniques we use. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment below, share with your friends, and help grow the channel. Take care.